Hi, this is Tali and welcome to Builder.com. I'm here at the 2009 Greenbills Conference in Anaheim, California, and I'm standing at IES's booth with Don, and he's going to talk to us about their virtual environment software um, and uh, the Gaia upgrades. So uh, how are you, Don? I'm fine. So let me tell you a little bit about our new system, version 6 of the virtual environment. What we're trying to do with our software is we're trying to address a number of problems that there is in the sustainability analysis side at this moment in time. People can't quantify what they're doing and they need to be able to understand what's the best option. So, so is it best to go for renewables? Or is it best to do something to the fabric? Is it best to look at the mechanical system or whatever? And the trouble is, without being able to quantify that, it's very hard for people to make decisions. And at this moment in time, the, the, most people can't really understand the complexity that a sustainable design requires and they need this quantification and that's where our software fits in. But the big problem is that most of this technology to do that effectively is very complex and you've got to say how could I get people to use this software who don't have the time to learn it or don't have the skill to learn it so how can the software be pitched at the right level for the user and this is why we've developed four different levels of our software um, and the, the, the base level you hear here you see our VE Pro software and that enables people to, to, to look at things in fine detail but what we're trying to do is, is give more people access to that technology and that's why we've released VEWare a while ago which what that does is that's free software that allows anyone to get access to powerful technology but in a very simple and easy to use way. But the two that we've just released in version 6 and expanded upon is the toolkits which, which allow an architect at the very early stage of design to understand a lot about the building in a way that they, they, they wouldn't get normally. And this enables them to make better decisions about what they do in terms of sustainable design. Get it right at the beginning and there's a far better chance that the design will be right at the end in a more sustainable building. And there is a number of architects who want to go into a bit greater depth, but to go into our VE Pro software is too complex to do. So therefore, by bringing out VE Gaia, which steps them through ste um, a workflow, that they can go step by step through a process, it means that they can then and uh, access the power of the, the full virtual environment, but without having to learn the complexity of what to do. So what I'd like to do is just show you a couple of elements of that just now. Basically what I've done here is, is I've taken a model in from SketchUp. We could take models from SketchUp, from Revit, or any kind of product that produces an X, a GBXML file. And, and this is going into the toolkits. Now, just as that geometry is coming across, we can assign data very, very easily to the model because at this stage, an architect at the very early stage doesn't want to put in things like occupancy profiles and construction details. They just want to pick from a list to be, to be as quickly as possible. So we've got a big database of information they just pick from. So they don't have to enter in numbers, they just pick the, the, the room type or the construction type that's closest to the one that they actually want in each of individual space. So that information has been assigned and what I'd like to do is show you some of the elements that's within inside at this moment in time. So here we're looking at the, the, the toolkits and we've got something like uh, the climate metrics. And if I just select that opposite uh, option just now, we've already said where are we in the world. That has picked up the climate data for us. And if you look here, it says in climate details, there's some graphical information that tells you um, uh, how often the temperature's above a certain range, um, how many hours is it below zero, and things like that. Um, but it also tells you information about the climate, what it's like. It's telling us, for example, the wind patterns, the winter's prevailing winds are typically from the north, winters are mild, summer is also cool summer nights. So we're trying to give them um, understanding by doing analysis. Now normally the architect would have to try and work that out themselves. By giving them this information, it's helping them understand what it's about. So if we look down here, we see it says diurnal temperature swing. This is the range of temperature swings that would occur over a day. And obviously the bigger temperature swings means a different thing from small temperature swings. And we say here, a small temperature swing, we say note three, in Note 3 it says, a good diurnal swing during the warmest months indicates the potential for passive nighttime cooling and thermal mass. So we're trying to not just interrogate the results for the architect, but also give them understanding so then they can make better design decisions. So the, the whole toolkit information is geared at trying to provide this kind of approach to give an architect, say, the 20,000 foot view so they can understand what it's like and make the kind of key decisions that can have a tremendous beneficial impact throughout the whole design process. 
Now, there's another kind of level here in the toolkits where we look at sustainability. And in this, we can start to do things like, on that same model, this is all done with the same model, we can start to look at energy and carbon, we can start to look at um, solar information, we can start to look at daylighting, we can start to look at water, we can start to look at load and zero carbon. So with these, we can start to address those kind of issues in the same kind of easy to use way, but giving and enabling an architect to get the, the information that allow them to make the right decisions at a very early stage. Now, that technology means that, and what we're finding at the moment is many architects are, are finding this a very comfortable thing to do. They're not intimidated by it, and, and therefore it's enabling them to do things they wouldn't normally do. But what happens at this point is because I mentioned earlier that we're kind of using predefined, preset quality information, but as the design evolves, the architect will turn around and say, I want to be able to go in and I want to be able to look at this in more detail. So, so where at the moment we also have things like the ability to be able to do lead, we can do, we can check on lead daylight credits, we can do comfort credits, we can do water credits and low carbon credits. Now, all of this is extremely useful. Now, you imagine getting all of that information very early on, but when you begin to start to make the changes, you want to see what the impact of that is. And this is where Gaia is different. With Gaia, you can start to change data. But if we try to get our, um, these customers to go to the full VE Pro system, it's too big a jump it's, it's, and from, from the toolkits to there. So the purpose of Gaia is to allow people that are working at the toolkit level to move towards the full version, VE Pro, but also enable the people on the Pro side who are maybe intermittent users or, or maybe not using parts of the system to be able to get use Gaia to get the full power of it. So it's an enabling process for both um, grades of user as far as that's concerned. And, and there is a slightly different approach here um, which I'll just show you. This is an example of the, the Gaia technology and in here where if you're trying to use any kind of software, if it's a particularly bit, a complex bit of software, you've got to try and remember where everything is. And, and, and that can sometimes, if you're only using it intermittently, that can be difficult to remember. Basically here what we're seeing with this technology is this is a step-by-step -step process of how you actually go through, in this, in this example, how you would set up all of the complex data, things like the oxygen profiles, the lighting profiles, equipment information, constructions, in the model in a step-by-step -step way that means that the user if he's new to the system, doesn't have to learn that. He just follows through this process. And this is what Gaia technology does. It enables you to be able to step through a workflow and do something that would be otherwise either take you very long to learn or quite complex to remember. And that's the power of the software. It's an enabling technology and, and, and enables people to do more complex things much simpler and much easier. Wonderful. Don, thank you so much for talking to us. Nice to meet you. This is Tali from Builder.com reporting to you from the 2009 Green Builds Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks so much.